how does Nora wear red lipstick? I need a paper towel. Hey everyone, hey smart mouth. kitchen and we need to talk like I need to talk I need to be real honest about how I feel about my kitchen and I hate it I, I hate my kitchen not just physically like I hate my kitchen whatever but it doesn't matter what house I own or where I live the kitchen has always been kind of the worst room of the house for me um you all want to see tropical tiki magic outfit of the day yes tropical tiki okay sorry about that um my kitchen I just find the kitchen just to be the most stressful area of the house. It is always the one that's the most undone. You know, you can go into the living room, you can fluff your couch, fluff your pillows, you know, <clears throat> fold a throw blanket maybe. You can straighten up the remote controls and you can vacuum. And it will probably look like that the next day and maybe even look like that the day after. But the kitchen never looks like anything that I try to make it look like. So, you know, you come in in the morning, you unload the dishwasher, you rinse off, you know, everything from the day before or whatever your process is, wipe down the countertops, and then by lunch, when my husband comes in and out, and then my lunch and I come in and out, and then for sure by dinner, the stove's a mess, the pans, the sink is full. It never is going to look like the same of when you left it that morning, much less the next day or the next day or the next day. And so I just wanted to come on and talk about how hard it is to change your lifestyle when it, it comes to food, your food lifestyle. And we've talked for the last few weeks about food lifestyle and how to make those massive changes. Um, the number one thing is I had to make friends with my kitchen. I literally had to make friends with my kitchen. And up until, you know, at least 40 years old, just I hated cooking. I still hate cooking. Let me be very clear. I still hate cooking. But I've made friends with cooking and I've also understood I have to let go of the expectation that my kitchen's going to look a certain way. It's a functional kitchen and we cook every day, every single day, every single day. I am so grateful with massive support with my husband because he cooks a lot for us. We probably really split it 50 50 if i'm working late in the hair salon he'll start something like pretty easy like tacos um or or something he's always in charge of the steak so i'm so grateful for that we'll have steak at least once a week and he'll do the steak in a cast iron skillet and he'll chop up some brussels sprouts with butter and salt and pepper and you know some things like that and so he's always in charge of that um, I'll come in and do some chicken dishes, a barbecue chicken dish, or you all have seen the barbecue um, meatballs, or I'll do meatloaf. I have all kinds of recipes with just ground beef. Um, we'll do pork chops with asparagus and rosemary and, and things like that. Um, grilled shrimp we'll do. Um, those are just some ideas, but I have to understand that my kitchen is going to function. And with function comes, you know, untidiness. And I can't always just keep up on it. So allowing myself to lower the expectations of the way the kitchen's gonna look has helped me make, make friends with the kitchen and make friends with cooking every day. Changing your lifestyle involves massive commitment and making friends with the kitchen is one of the uh, pieces of advice. 
So I also want to say number two, the number two thing that I think helps being able to change your food lifestyle is your partner. And I'm not necessarily talking about a spouse. It could be somebody that you live with, a roommate. It could be somebody you don't live with. Maybe it's a sibling or a parent or even a coworker. Coworkers are sometimes really important. I have a friend who works in the medical community and she says like, Sometimes pharmaceutical reps will come and bring the entire office donuts or a pizza or a snack. And to be, she, she's on keto as well, and she said to be the one that brings her lunch every day or declines the snack of the office. We've all been there where in the break room at offices, you've got a candy dish, you've got a chip vending machine, you've got such unhealthy things facing you at every turn, just, you know, and to be the one resistant and being alone makes it harder. Um, and so I think when you have an, a partner or a support team that can be on that same path with you, um, I always advise to join a Facebook group, whether you are vegan or vegetarian or keto or whatever kind of lifestyle you want to be, maybe try to stack up some resources for you. Even if you're just having the bad day and just want to say, I'm struggling today, you know, um, and to have that friend or support system, um, or even, you know, hire a coach. People hire me to help guide them through those daily challenges. And it is hard. None of this is easy, but changing what we're used to is why it's hard because we're used to it. So you have to change your, you have to get your new used to established and that takes at least a year. It takes at least a year to be used to something. And I think that's so important to set up your kitchen for success. And so I have tried so hard, like I said, to make friends with my kitchen. And I just wanna share a couple of things that I've also done um, to make my kitchen more not user-friendly because I'm not gonna talk about pots and pans and spatulas and stupid stuff to make your kitchen user-friendly. I wanna make the kitchen a bright place for me to feel something other than stress. And so I'm gonna share with you um, a really important piece of my kitchen and um, tell you about why it makes me super happy. So I'm gonna move over this way and turn the camera around and we will talk about it. It's right there. This is, I'm gonna try to capture it the best way I can. It's really difficult to see. And you're probably thinking, what the heck is that? Let's see if I can get closer. So this is a photograph that my husband took when we were on a vacation in Amsterdam. We were actually in the Bowles factory. Bowles is a liqueur, um, pretty popular in Amsterdam or Northern Europe. Anyway, we got a chance to tour it, and of course, we we had so much fun walking around the factory, and they had such a cool tour that you could take and see the process of the liqueur being made, and of course, you get taste testing. But here, they wanted you to capture the experience of everything about food or consumption because we're this is of course a drink but it still holds true to why this is in the kitchen this is i don't know if you can tell but those are fragrance snuffers where you go up and they're labeled of course with the fragrance and then down here is this little puffer thing and you can smell the fragrance and so why is this at a liqueur factory. I think what they're really implementing here is that sometimes your tastes start with smell. I would even argue they start with sight. So you've got the sight sense, you've got the smell sense, you've got the taste sense, the whole thing. And so it was such a beautiful hallway. And my husband being a photographer just was like, stand back, I have to capture it. This print 
actually, it's not a print. He, he actually got it printed on metal. That's a piece of metal. Can you all tell? This just makes me so happy in my kitchen. Of course, we've got a Tiffany box blue wall that doesn't really go with it, but I don't even care. This makes me feel good. And so it's always important to put something like this in your kitchen. Isn't that cool? I just love it. He did such a good job. So whatever it takes for you to make your environment something, and it's not always gonna be perfect. My kitchen actually is a mess right now. What you don't see is below me is the kitchen sink. You all are in the windowsill so I can have good light. Anyway, uh, below me is a pan. It's a blue pan. I've got spatula and another little bowl that I mixed some spices in. I've got a paper towel with my red lipstick on it laying there over here. I have uh, two coffee mugs. Oh, and my water. Should we talk about water? I drink water all day long and I love drinking water out of glass. So I got like this glass tumbler. You all have probably seen it. Um, my husband put, speaking of the sink, my husband put in a reverse osmosis water filter several years ago because we were trying to clean up our water intake and here in America they just pump a massive amount of fluoride in the water and we wanted to kind of clean that out of our diets. So he was so sweet he got underneath the cabinets and there's like this huge contraption of this reverse osmosis filters. It's like a double filter and it's he even like brought up a tap so we have our like regular sink tap and then another water tap so I get to have that all day long and it's amazing so so grateful for that uh, usually I add in electrolytes because I feel like as we age we need sodium magnesium and potassium and to keep our kidneys functioning well so I always add electrolytes to my water and occasionally I will add um, like coconut water. It's by a company. Here's one of them. A company called Bai or Bay. Anyway, it's a coconut water. Now, I will tell you that looking at the label, it does have one gram of sugar. My goal for being, being ketogenic is less than 10 grams of sugar per day. But for me, I do less than five. I count the grams and I know where every single gram of sugar is coming from. And one gram of sugar is from my buy drink. Now, if you look at the packaging, this is two serving size. So actually I get four out of this. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I just love the flavor of it. So I'll put like one fourth in with my reverse osmosis water and then put this in the refrigerator. And then like a few hours later, I'll add the other fourth and fill up my water, add electrolytes. And then a few hours later, another fourth, add more water, electrolytes, and then finish it. So it will take me a whole day to finish one. And again, it's consuming one gram of sugar and I love these. It just gives my water a little something special. So I think it's so important to talk about your kitchen. Thank you for hanging out with me in my kitchen and let me know what you think about how to make your kitchen special. And it doesn't always have to be about food. It doesn't have to be about your equipment. It can be about something added that personally brings you joy. So I'll talk to you later.